Two tours, two countries, two front lines in the war on terror. Major Eric Eglin has put his life on the line in both Afghanistan and Iraq, helping his comrades identify, avoid, and defuse roadside bombs. Some of his Iraq experiences are recounted in a book called The Blog of War. Major Eglin joins me now from Sacramento along with his wife, Anya. Hi there. Thanks for being with us today. Hi, Betty. Thank you for having us. Sure. Major, let me ask you, um, you served both Afghanistan and Iraq. What is it that the American public doesn't know about what you and other troops have experienced and are experiencing on the front lines? I don't think they know nearly as much as I hope, I wish they would know about the progress that's being made out there, uh, about how the public support in Iraq is more and more strongly behind the, the newly elected democratic government how significant the Constitution and the, the judges and the, the civil institutions uh, that, that aren't conducive to headlines but, but are very significant in developing the, the civil society that, that Iraq is moving towards. And, and the same, uh, on principle, the same thing is going on in Afghanistan. We were just talking about a little bit earlier with our Barbara Starr about the Anbar province and just the violence that has been taking place there. Um, but yet when you arrived in Baghdad, you say that you were so surprised at how morale was uh, for the troops there and how high morale was. Yes, morale was sky high when I was there and that stunned me uh, having followed it from the Pentagon, uh, been working as a counterinsurgency analyst. Uh, I assume that in the areas where the roadside bomb threat was concentrated, where the casualties were the highest, that morale wouldn't be very high. But I'll, but I'll tell you why. It's because the soldiers see all the good things that we're doing over there. The schools, the, so the society, the hospitals, uh, and, and the, the commerce, and, and things like that. But they also see what we're giving back to the enemy at night. And, and those types of things don't get filmed. The attacks that the enemy does, they're very sophisticated at using the airwaves to get their message out and show what attacks they're doing. We don't do that, but we're still very effective at taking the fight to the enemy during the night. Well, I want to read you something that uh, you wrote in this blog uh, from January 2005. You wrote, moving into a hot area and preparing to stop resulted in competing questions dueling in my mind. Why would anyone get out of a perfectly good armored vehicle? And at the same time, how perfectly good is that same vehicle when an RPG hits? You know, it's a serious situation. You're talking about hitting a hot area, facing possible attack, yet there's humor in that. I mean, is that your coping mechanism? Is that how you get through it? Well, it is, and, and that's part of what, what led me to write a lot is when I get back from missions, and it's very emotional. Uh, and so it, it is, it's cathartic in a way, it, uh, writing it down and, and thinking back, well, what were the thoughts in my head as we were in, a, in an area where there had been known to be quite a few attacks? Uh, on one hand, your natural impulse is to say, hey, there's a lot of armor around me and I like that, I'll stay right in here. <laughs> on the other hand, uh, you, the thought of a rocket-propelled grenade uh, if that were the, if that if there were an attack pending, you'd want to be as far away from that vehicle as possible. So yeah, just the the sort of tactical minute by minute thoughts uh, when you write them down, it's it's uh, it can be interesting to read later on, but it also helps you cope and keep an even emotional keel while you're there. Speaking of coping, got to talk to your lovely wife, Anya. Let me ask you, Anya, before we get to how you dealt with all of this, you've got to tell us about how you two met. It's quite an interesting story, and and you pretty much fell in love right away. <laughs> Hi, Betty. Yes, um, the story is, it's really, um, it's different than other stories. We met on, on internet, on pictures.com, <laughs> and we knew each other only three months, and Eric proposed to me after three days. Oh, my goodness. And after three months, we got married in Poland. So the whole story is a little bit different than the stories that you hear all the time. Absolutely. But, but the Lord works in mysterious ways. Doesn't he? Okay, let me ask you this though, Anya. It, it had to have been hard to see your husband go off to war. Um, how difficult was that for you? Because in fact, he just returned 10 days before your first child was born. That's right, Betty. When I find out that Eric is going to go to Iraq in January 2005, I knew I would miss him, but I didn't know how much. Two weeks later, I find out I was pregnant with our first child. So going through pregnancy alone, knowing that my husband is in Iraq and worrying about his safety was difficult. But there were several factors that helped me to go through. First, it was knowing that we both shared faith in Jesus Christ and we knew that our lives are in His hands. Second was my family and friends. I would mm. not do it without them. Yeah, you need that support network. Eric, let me ask you, uh, you're 
Now, is this true? Expecting your second child, right? We are. Okay. Yeah, we got a due date in late February. Wow. Lord willing. Well, pre congratulations <laughs> to you. Thank um, you. But Thank let, you. Let Anya, me... Anya stole my cell phone. She won't let me call the deployment <laughs> officer. Anymore. Well, that was what I was going no to more ask you. That being the case, would you go back? I would if called, but uh, it's doubtful that I would be involuntarily recalled. I've always volunteered uh, since 9-11 since for the various deployments that I've done. Uh, but yeah, it's unlikely in the next year that I'd be involuntarily recalled just uh, because of the way the cycles work. All right, five years after September 11th, uh, I, I want to ask you this in all seriousness now. You've mm -hmm. been on the front lines, Afghanistan and Iraq. Do you feel like America is winning this war on terror? Are we as prepared as we should be five years after the fact? I think we are winning, and, and the important thing is uh, we're against a tough enemy, so it's going to continue to be a tough fight, but here's why I think we're winning. I think we're winning because we've taken the fight to the enemy. We've gone on the offensive. We've gone to Afghanistan. We've gone to Iraq. Recently, Al-Qaeda uh, announced that, that Iraq is the central front of their war against us, and, and I agree with that assessment. So by going on the offensive, you take away the sanctuary, you take away the ability for them to plan and, and finance and, and fund, and you keep them on the run. Because we saw what happened with 9-11. It took them years to be able to do that, and they had to have sanctuaries, and they had to pl have places where they could freely operate around the world. And, and if we allow that, they're going to continue to plot and attack. And I think that is directly the, the reason why, the fact that we've gone on the offensive is really the fundamental reason why they've been unable to attack us on our homeland in the last five years. Major, we're going to have to leave it there. Major Eric Eglin and his wife Anya, thank you both. And uh, again, congratulations on that baby that you're expecting. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Betty. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.